Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers. We have a big show for you today because it's a special day. It is. It's Happy Convenience Store Day. It is. It's 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven Day. July 11th. Oh, time is flying, Jerry. We hope everybody had a good Fourth of July <laughs> last week. I've been watching these uh, videos of people that set off fireworks and it pew, shoots between them, or, um, or one of them will go into the bucket of fireworks. And have you all seen that? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You don't do fireworks in the villages. Yeah. No, I think they're afraid of us uh, lighting uh, people's other houses on fire <laughs> or playing with fire is not good for elderly. I don't know why they're not allowed. Well, maybe it's some it's PTSD. A good idea. It could uh, be. It, it could be dry here. Yeah. Although we did get some, some good heavy rain this past week. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's mailbag. I'll tell you what else was uh, awesome, not awesome, on the 4th of July. What was that? That Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Did oh, any of you watch that? Yes, we watched that. Joey Chestnut again, uh, 15 years supreme. And he even uh, tackled a protester and choked him out on, on TV. That was great. That was the best part. Um, <laughs> you know, I couldn't watch it. I, the part when they zeroed in on their mouths and then watched them try to choke it down and slobber it out and I'm ready to bark. Oh, I, I, said, I was enjoying it I until they it. until they zoomed in on this guy and they you know they dip their hot dogs in water and they, they cram uh, it and it's coming it 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 oh, it horrible. Don't, don't. But but what a true bit of Americana. <laughs> he ate over sixty hot dogs. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. We went to a fantastic social at Case and Hammock the other night. Oh my gosh, friends, you wouldn't believe this party. And we went to McGrady's Pub. We actually did a live, I'm sorry, we are so bad at live videos, but we did a live video <laughs> from McGrady's Pub. We were going to mm -hmm. eat dinner there, and we'll show you a little bit of our adventure there. And what did we leave in Indiana? Lots of viewers want to know about mm -hmm. downsizing and mm -hmm. purging, and we're going to talk about that a little bit here, too. Have you ever wondered where all that dust comes from? I, I mean, no offense to you, because, <laughs> I mean, I can no dust offense. it, too, right? I noticed that our, like the dresser or the chest of drawers or the table, you'll see a little film of dust on it. Where does that come from? Hey, let's do some shout outs. Let's start off with Case and Hammock. Mm. They invited us a week or two ago. They said, we're going to have our first ever, it's, a, it's our first formal social event. And I thought, well, they invited us. They said, we want Jerry and Linda to attend. I said, that sounds like fun. I know. But we don't have any formal clothes. Yeah. We just have shorts and T-shirts. It's a formal event. Yeah. And so I called her, or I texted her back, and I said, um, Long you know, dress, I, we, short we, dress. we would like to come, but we, we just don't have any formal attire. And she said, oh, no, no. I mean, that formally, this is our first event. <laughs> and so we went last night. Fantastic. Scooter the DJ provided entertainment. Did you have a good time? I had a blast. I'm kind of glad I didn't wear my long formal, though. <laughs> these folks do know how to have a good time, and that's the beauty of these new areas down south. I mean, we've made it well known. Mm -hmm. We prefer the landscape and the layout to the northern areas. We prefer it. Mm -hmm. We're old school. We like it up here. But down there, however, the strength is not in the... Uh, the architecture in the landscaping, it's the people. It's the people. <laughs> These people are so kind and generous. They made us feel like family right they off, did. didn't they? They really, really did. <laughs> and it was a full, full event. And it's they've only lived there a short time. Mm -hmm. But it, they acted like they all knew each other forever. And, and the food they brought, the a tables full of food, finger foods. And it was amazing and delicious. Ladies, you all know how, well, I could say men, you all know how to put on a party. Yeah, very good. So thank you for the invite. We had oh, a really nice time. And Gizmo, oh, yeah. Gizmo has his, uh, his, look here, he's got a Gizmo scarf he was given last night. And so nice. we have some visors with our names on them. I'm going to wear that golfing. I cannot wait. <laughs> So, thank you for inviting us, Case and Hammock. You all are lovely people. I think we're honorary members. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you remember a couple weeks ago, we gave you the address of Marie Gadevsky. Like you guys always do. Sorry, Pat Dennis. <laughs> you, you, you fired up and you wrote her cards and letters and even yes. sent some small gifts. And 
She was so thrilled. She called us. You have made her days. And, you know, that's lovely to give somebody a part of your heart, to give them cards. And she is just absolutely thrilled. We thank you for the blessings you've given her. Oh. Marie sends us little gifts once in a while. And she, I think she raids her personal <laughs> stash. I don't but know. she sent us some really neat little plates. Marie, we want oh, to thank you for that. They're really cute. Because we have figured out a way Marie can watch our show now. Actually, she can listen to it because she, she has some vision problems. But thank you, Marie, and thank all of you. We went to McGrady's Pub. Oh, delicious food, people. Delicious. It was good food. But for me, the location is awesome. It's in yes. Sawgrass Grove. Yes. They're still getting their, their bearing, you know. Yeah. They're just starting up. But it was the service was first rate. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a letter this week from someone that said she has two friends that work there and they work so hard. And we oh, yeah. will agree. Uh, Joel was our server and uh, he did a fantastic Great. job. The food was, was good. Uh, honestly, Joel, you might tell him to cook my fish maybe one more minute. But it was still good. I yeah. mean, it was, still was good. And it was a great crowd. Uh, we actually went back a, a couple of days later to visit for a reason. And it was standing room only to get Yeah, in. you know why we visited? Because <laughs> I left my credit card on the table. He did. He said, food's on him, everybody, right? <laughs> but, I, I mean, I couldn't find it. That's scary. Mm -hmm. And you check this shirt, and you check your pants, and you check your wallet. And did I lay it yeah. on the counter? Is it in her purse? And you trace back, and you can't find it. And they don't open until 3, so I had oh, to wait to call them. Oh, I know. had to wait all day. So uh, we, we found it. Thank you, McGrady's, for holding on to that. I yeah. hope no suspicious charges come up. <laughs> no, they were uh, they were so gracious and so nice. And that was very good. Yeah. I told you all I was going to have the hamburger. I said it was eighteen ninety five, and it was. But actually, then I saw fish and chips, and I thought, an English pub, yeah. fish and chips, sure. that's what I'll go for. Sure. And honestly, it was good. I would have it again, for sure. <laughs> I'd like to try that hamburger. That's a little bit above my rank, though. Eighteen ninety-five for a hamburger. <laughs> Good Angus. But they said it was a brisket burger. Oh. So that makes all the difference. Okay. With bacon. Uh, there you go. Bacon's always an, better. Yeah. <laughs> this is Patrick and his lovely wife, and boom, they bought a new home. I'm sorry, lovely wife. I pulled that off Facebook when you sent us that post, and I lost your name. Oh. So if it's important to you, let us know. You sure look friendly. <laughs> Beautiful lady. <laughs> this is Danny in her Jerry and Linda t-shirt. You know what? That with the cartoon front is one of my very favorite shirts. And I love that color. I do too. People this week, we've probably had five requests. People say, can we buy one of your t-shirts? We don't sell them. Yeah. Go on Etsy. Just go to Etsy and type in Jerry and Linda t-shirts. You'll find them. There's a selection. And now they, I think they have V-necks and things. We don't get a penny of it. We just knew that you wanted it, so we found a vendor that would make them. And she's a wonderful lady based out of Idaho. And yeah. um, check it out on Etsy. And this is Michelle in front of that famous sign. Doesn't she strike a dandy pose? <laughs> People look so happy in front of that sign. They're so hopeful. <laughs> And on the other hand, they've just spent a half a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but what an event. What a big moment in your life. And uh, she sure looks great there. Thanks, Michelle, for sending that in. This is Jeff and Tricia. Jeff and Tricia are from the Nashville area. We had the good fortune to eat uh, supper with them. Supper, dinner? We, we say eat both. Yeah. <laughs> At the uh, Chop House. And yes. that's, a, that's a good place to eat. It is good. Tell you the truth, I'm just as happy at Culver's. This is Bob, and his daddy says he loves watching Gizmo. Doesn't he look thrilled? Yeah, he ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> good looking pup. This is Gary and Diane. I bet you Gary's a comedian. What do you think? I think so. And they're at the Seabreeze Rec Center, and look at this guy behind him, Mr. <laughs> photo Bob. This is a four banger right here. We have four of our viewers in one photo. But the story is unique. Mike and Alice and Kevin and Karen, they met in September during their lifestyle visit here. And after it all unfolded, they are next door neighbors. How did they do that? That is I mean, amazing. Oh Down in Deluna. Deluna is a popular place. I took notes. <laughs> Whatever's laying next to my yeah, every... uh, chair. By the way, the COVID home test 
Yeah. Man, I am coughing for, <laughs> for a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Boom. I just had it, though. You remember. It says it's negative. God love him. Yeah. When I looked on the village's website for DeLuna, there were 203 homes listed. That was a bunch. Now, I, I counted them. I went through there. So I could be wrong off, you know, one, two, or 15, but it's pretty much way up there around 200. And of those homes, 62 were still for sale. The rest were pending. Oh, my goodness. People, hurry. If you want to go into the Luna. And there were some homes. <laughs> the, the lowest one I found was 243000 Okay. Yeah. And they went all the way up to $1.8 million. Oh, boy. So that's the Luna. This beautiful pup is Bailey. Now, Bailey is Rick and Barbara's dog mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. And sadly, after... I think it was 17 years. They had to put Bailey down this past week or so. Oh, so sorry. And uh, he was a great companion to them. It's a decision. Close. It's a decision that we all have to face sometime. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, a, not a happy one by any means. Mm -mm. Izzy's mom, Joe, has been having a hard time after watching our show. It's just been keeping her going. She's had some health problems mm -hmm. and recently had surgery and she had a birthday on the 7th, and of course, we don't put a show out on the 7th. We did on the 4th and the 11th, right. so we want to tell you happy birthday, and I hope you're feeling better. This is Alex. Alex looks like Christopher Columbus. He's got that pose. <laughs> He's uh, at Hubbard Glacier in Alaska on a cruise. You know, that's a beautiful state. I'd like to cruise to that state. We didn't cruise before. We flew in, but boy, I would like to do a cruise. Well, we sort of cruised. Remember we went on the mm -hmm. Kenai Fjords Glacier Tour? Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. All that ice falling off of there. Mm -hmm. Calving. Yeah, Spectacular. Whales that. jumping. Yeah. We did. We had a good, a good tour. A great we tour. There. But uh, Alex is doing a lifestyle tour soon, and uh, we wanted to say hello to him. Last week, we took Gizzy in to the vet, but just a regular routine, get his rabies shots kind of thing. While I'm in there, this guy comes in with a pit bull on a, we have one of those retractable leashes. Yes. You know, zzz, zzz, you know, you can tighten up, you can pull back. It's a great leash. That was really good. Uh -huh. And he had his pit bull on just a regular old rope. And this pit bull was jumping on people's, little, this poor little lady with her kitty cat and a little, cat, little box there. Those pit bulls all over it. And the guy's <laughs> giving him 10 feet of, of rope in there. And then he's cussing that dog out and smacking that dog. Yeah. And, I'll tell you who needed to be smacked, not the dog. The dog was not uh, poorly behaved. It was the owner. We were so uncomfortable. It yeah. was not a good experience. Yeah, and, but he goes with the flow, believe me. He's, he couldn't care less about the other dogs. Yeah. He wants to sit on our lap or just yeah. be around us. Mm -hmm. But wow, that, that, is, that is just amazing. We don't need any unnecessary fires or any fires. Yeah, any unnecessary fires or actual fires that are necessary. <laughs> I'm getting ready to start <laughs> this question. You start talking about this. <laughs> Be nice. I'm sick. I think you need to go to the Be doctors. nice. You're going to the doctors today. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 Hell with it. Because maybe that high interest, higher, whatever. God, I'm not saying it well. Last week we also talked about memory. Do you remember that? <laughs> and, and how it could be fading a little bit and you want to stay sharp and do things. Yeah. And, and we had a little memory issue this week. Well, yes. We forgot to take something out of the car. I was taking my... Uh, we... we uh, okay, I forgot to take something out of the car, and I should have. Uh, my granddaughter was here for a few days, and we were going places, and got in the car, and the back of the car, everything in the car smelled like a dirty diaper or whatever. It was like, you know what. And so I'm going, oh my gosh, what's in this car? So I shut the door, opened the back end, and lo and behold, there's a bag there. From Walmart. And guess what was in it? Three pounds of hamburger <laughs> that I left the night before. Ching, in, in the car. Ching, ching, ching. ching. 
And let me tell you, people, in the hot garage in Florida, you don't want to leave three pounds of hamburger. Don't leave, don't leave your meat in the car in your Florida. Car. That was disgusting. Yeah, it can happen to anybody. They put them in those little bags and you, you throw them in the back of your car. And Well, it was gray and the back end of the car was gray. Didn't see it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> to start our questions today, I have one for you. These strange spots and streaks and lines appeared in our lawn last week. Mm. Now, to be honest with you, it was the day after our lawn service came to do some weed spraying. Right. Mm -hmm. But this happened. Now, the lawn company say that they didn't put anything on that would have done that. And my grass cutter says that he didn't do it. So what happened? Well, what do y'all think that could be? <laughs> the lines are so close together, I don't think it's a lawnmower. And besides, he had, a big, he had big tires, wide. Yeah. These are small. What does that look like? Do any of you know? Let us know what you think. Jack, the animal's friend, writes this question. People are moving south in droves. With all the Florida construction, where will all the animals go? That's a pretty good question, Jack. Ordinarily, we would diss this off and just say, you know, there are lots of places yes. for animals. Come on, Jack. But boy, if you drive northeast, mm -hmm. you're going to see lots of construction mm -hmm. and lots oh of bare goodness. earth. And there are mm -hmm. hundreds, if not a thousand acres that are just level. Mm -hmm. So where do those animals go? Are there room for those animals? In our experience, the villages does plan for that. And if you could see it from a gold wingnut point of view, mm -hmm. looking down, you'd see lots of trees and wilderness areas that those animals do move to. Yeah. I mean, if you have a bare open field, you don't see a lot of animals in there anyway. Right. They tend to yeah. To hug those lower areas, the areas with water, the areas of vegetation. The, the issue is the animals. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of places. We went to the Finney Nature Trail last week with our grandkids, which is wonderful to have them an hour and 20 minutes away. Yeah, We were able to, to hang out with them and take them places. That Finney Nature Trail, if you haven't been there, and we had not in three and a half years, believe it or, or not. not. <laughs> it's a boardwalk that goes, yeah. I'm going to say a half a mile. Yeah. It winds all around through a marsh, a mm -hmm. creek. Yeah, little it's beautiful. Small little water areas. We've saw so much. Super neat birds, and we saw an alligator. Turtles. Turtles. Tree I mean, frogs. Yeah, we we saw, and there they are, and you're looking at them on camera there. There are plenty of other places around here. You know, we go to the uh, Emeralda Marsh, uh, the Lake of Popka Wildlife Drive. Oh, my gosh. And you're going to see alligators there. If you all want to take to see alligators and you don't see them in the village, just go to the Apopka Wildlife, uh, what is it called, trail or whatever. It's a fantastic place. We saw alligators. Like, we counted and counted probably 20 or more, 30 alligators. It's about a... a 50 minute drive from here mm -hmm. and it's an 11 mile loop where you go slow yes. on a gravel road and it goes in and out of little areas with mm -hmm. with uh, gorgeous lake and you'll see you will see yeah. things there it's only open on Friday Saturday and Sunday and oh. holidays really worth the drive up there I love to go up there and take pictures and video and yeah. and uh, whatever but the Lake of Popka Wildlife Drive but there are plenty of more places this is from Hazel in Monarch Grove it seems like this construction is going on forever. I've never had to dust my furniture so much in my life. First of all, I'm going to show my age. Do you remember that show about a lady named Hazel back in the, when we were <laughs> yes. kids? Yes. She was a maid, right? I loved her. She was fun to watch. <laughs> I'm with you, Hazel. I have worked so hard trying to keep the dust down in this house. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Uh, Really? <laughs> I've never seen you pick up a duster in your eye. Well, to, to, be, to be fair, it takes a lot of work to put these shows out. It does. It does. I do the dusting, and I don't do it very often. I should. You know, I'm looking at the ceiling fans. I'm going, uh, I have to get up on a ladder, and I know they're dirty, and I'm going to have to work at it to get up there. Wish I knew somebody tall. Hmm. You hear that thing, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, and this yeah. guy looks under his bed and says, I don't know, but it looks like somebody's coming or going. <laughs> Just make that up. We came back from dropping one of the grandchildren off the other day, and we get off the turnpike at exit 296, 
Now we have friends that say, don't do that. Lord, no, don't do that. You have to come through that new construction area. But that's what we do because it's shorter. Yeah. And I can't wait to get back inside the bubble. That's the quickest way to get in the bubble. Look at this video. We encountered over 30 dump trucks in a three mile span. That's why there's so much dust. They're kicking it all up or when they're moving it. And it's going to be that way because that was out near Middleton. Uh, yes, area. Eastport. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all just getting started. That's going to be. It's going to be for a while. Yes, it will. Oh, okay. Kimberly says she's going to do a lifestyle visit in July. She says it's hot. I know. Are there any pools that have shade over the water so you don't bake in the sun? That's her department. Well, I only know a couple that have uh, umbrellas. Well, actually one, and that's the Finney pool. And they have umbrellas where you can sit under. And because they're right next to the Finney grill, and they'll actually bring food out to you if you order food. So they want you to relax and enjoy the time at the pool. So they provide umbrellas. I wish the other ones did too. However, well, they have gazebos. I mean, yes. what do you call a thing? Yeah. Pergola. Pergola. Yeah, pergolas. Uh, yeah, on all the pools. And so there's area. And in fact, the corners, two corners of the uh, pool areas are got tables where you can sit and have picnics. And they're in a cool and maybe even a fan around that one, too. So there are pools that are covered with the pergola. Uh, and then some of the new pools down south have actual palm tree really close. Look at this one. This is at Homestead Rec Center. Mm -hmm. They put this beautiful Sylvester Palm right next to the pool. Yeah. I know some things are going to drop into that pool, but it's still so uh, beautiful. Water Lily has one also, a palm tree right near it. So it's pretty, it's really nice. I love laying in the pool looking up at that palm tree. And you know that I am an anti-sun guy because, I mean, yeah. I'm looking pretty good though. I still yeah, got... Yeah, you're looking better. But I haven't gotten my results back yet, so mm -hmm. fingers, fingers crossed on crossed. that. It's a praying. But I've never had a problem because we go later in the day. Mm -hmm. It may not be covered, but we'll go at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking in June and July, and yeah. and it's good. The sun is down. It's not so direct. You can always find a place in the pool where it's a little bit less yeah. uh, sunny. So that's what we do. Lori writes, are there any resort-like pools? From Google Maps, they look like basic rectangles, concrete decks, and a little landscaping. A vlog on the pools of the villages might be interesting. I like nice padded lounge chairs and umbrellas and palm trees. Will I be disappointed? That's from Lori. As far as resort type pools, some of the pools now down south are being made in a different configuration, more like the kidney bean type thing, or is that why the kidney bean? Anyway, a bean shape, and it's rounded. Kidney. It's Kidney bean, whatever. Kidney shaped. Yeah, kidney shaped. And it has uh, the steps, the, 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 the three foot has a really a lot of steps. So a couple steps go in, graduated. And there's actually the Finney pool is graduated. I mean, it's there's no steps. You can just bring your babies in there and lay, you know, grandchildren. They can sit real close to you right on the ground with no steps. So that's really a nice pool. So as far as resort type pools, the newer ones are looking more like resort pools. This is from Linda. She spells her name with a Y. Uh -huh. A little bit different. <laughs> Hi, Jerry and Linda. We love your videos and all the information about the villages. Are there any indoor walking tracks anywhere in the villages? It would make sense for the hot, humid summer months. No indoor walking tracks. That's a shame, though. That's, I don't think so. No? Well, if you had one, think how big a building you would have to have to have an indoor walking track. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could make a small one in a building, but that's not what you're after. You're wanting to go for a, for a mm -hmm. walk, like at a YMCA. Right. Or, and that would be so crowded if you did that. Yeah. It's like an indoor pool. I would love, I was shocked they didn't have any indoor pools here. Mm -hmm. 
But if you had one, it would be so crowded. Mm -hmm. Sue and Fred have a question about the airports. We flew into the Orlando airport. It was an absolute zoo. Are there any other good alternatives near the villages? Well, first off, Orlando airport is Orlando. It's Disney World. It is kind of like a zoo. There are so many children in that airport going to Disney World. And I'm telling you, every flight has probably 15 to 20 kids. <laughs> That's the, the most convenient. Yeah. But is it really that convenient? Because now the parking is harder. Mm -hmm. There's construction up there. It, from here, now, we can never give you directions from the villages to the airport because we live 30 minutes south from Spanish Springs almost. So it's going to take you longer to get to the airport from up there. We live farther away from the airport than it would if you lived in Monarch Grove. So we can't tell you exactly how far, but for us, it's an hour and 10 minutes on a good day, on a real good day. And then you get there and it's crowded, Orlando. So what are your other options? You have the Sanford Orlando International Airport. It's just a tiny bit farther, but they, they have a different group of airlines that run out of there. Mm -hmm. My favorite is Gainesville, mm -hmm. but that's like the little airport on the TV show Wings. They have three gates, I think. That is a sweet It's place. tiny. You can literally park and throw a rock into the terminal. I mean, it is that close. <laughs> you know, other ones, you're taking shuttles and you're off site yeah. and this one, boom, you are right there at Gainesville. So if you fly American Airlines, I know they service it. Yes. But then they only go to a couple of locations. I think they go to Dallas. But those are smaller planes. And they go to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Or you have Tampa as an option. I like the Tampa airport. It's For some reason, it's smaller. It's easier in, easier out. No tolls. To go to Orlando to the airport, you're going to pay about eleven sixty in tolls on a round trip, give and, or take. And then the gas, so it's probably a $40 trip. Well, you're still going to have to have gas if you go to yeah, that's true. Tampa. Mm -hmm. But all your transportation here, the Villages Airport van, Groom, they all travel to the Orlando International Airport, MCO. They, they don't go to Tampa. You can hire a private chauffeur yeah. or limousine service to take you over there. And maybe they will eventually. But it's harder to get to all the other airports. So that's why Orlando's our go-to. That's our go-to. But tell them your story. She flew last. Oh. She flew two weeks ago. Yes. And she came back and she told me, Ooh, remember we're going to do a pet peeve show. We've got them stockpiled. This would be one for me. Tell them this. What pet happened. peeve. I was on a flight two weeks ago and there's this young little lady. She's about 12 years old and she was flying by herself. And uh, this was a, an incredible flight. This little girl flew by herself, I guess, to meet her grandpa grandparents. And Believe it or not, she talked almost the entire flight. I'm not going to tell you which uh, uh, company flew because I don't want them to get into trouble. But um, anyway. <laughs> they it was Southwest. <laughs> anyway, I didn't see a companion for this girl. She was by herself. But she sat on the very front row right near the, uh, uh, the flight attendants. And she conversed with them, talked to them the whole time. And she wanted to go. They asked, and would you like to sit in the cockpit? And she did. She came back. They gave her little wings. And then she came back and she said, can I talk on the intercom? And they let her. And so she said, welcome everybody to your flight, whatever. And she started talking. Okay, I thought that was the end of it. No, it went on the entire flight. She talked about the beverages. Can we, are we going to have Starbucks coffee? Can we have some Starbucks? And on and on it went. And you can get that anywhere. But <laughs> oh my. That's and aggravating. Every, yeah. Everybody was trying to like do this and put their hands on their ears. And the stewardess tried their best to, to accommodate her and be real gentle and be kind to her. And a couple of times they, you know, had her do the hush hush. They, she even ended up passing out snacks to everybody oh my Lord. on the flight. It was amazing. Now, that's like the, the pit bull I told you about. Remember that? Oh. I said the dog wasn't the problem. Her parents were probably the problem. Yeah. And this was not a special needs young lady. No. <laughs> She's probably the one at the Walmart checkout that says, I want candy. Uh, yes. I want candy. She wanted Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks. It was incredible flight. I, I'm so glad to get off that flight. <laughs> Tom Kenny asked a question about golf courses and... He'd like to know, do people fix their ball marks on the greens and do they fix their divots in the fairway? Do they pick up their broken tees, blah, blah, blah. Oh, sorry, Tom, not blah, blah, blah. A lot of other interesting stuff there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a golf course. You're supposed to. 
Everybody that tees off should have a ball repair tool, a divot repair tool, where if you hit the ball high and you make a mark on the green, you, you fix that when you get to the green. If you go into the sand trap, you're supposed to rake your trap. The thing is, and especially on the executive courses, these are your learning courses, your beginning courses. And if a person hasn't been taught to do that, they don't do it. And you find it all the time. Sometimes we'll get to a green and I'll see six ball marks. Well, I always say, or more. If you're good enough to leave a ball mark, you have to be pretty good to leave a ball mark. You have to hit the ball high and hard and far and boom, it makes a ball mark. You should know how to fix it if you're good enough to make one. Yeah. But people trudge through the sand traps, whack their ball out or walk in and get it and throw it out. It just leaves their footprints. Legally in the game of golf, you got to leave that ball in a footprint and it's harder than yes. heck to get that ball out of there. So people do it. Does everybody do it? No. You'd see more of that going on in the championship courses, which is why some people don't want to play the executives. But I like the executives. It's, that's not an issue for me. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, frankly, I don't I, report my scores anywhere. You know, I'll roll the ball if I need to. If it's in a shoe print, I'll move it out. What the heck? But I do see the ambassadors coming by quite a bit to pick up the little tees and, and check on the, um, the tee box, and they'll put sand in the divots. And they're there working quite hard to make it look nice for us. But there are people that are lazy. The ambassadors are hardworking mm -hmm. and, by and large, a really great group of people. Yeah, absolutely. This is a long story. I'm going to try to keep it a little short. I told you this, this show was going to be a big one. Paul came from Kentucky with his wife, Melissa, and they brought their electric golf cart down. They got here, and that's a picture of it there. They found the battery wasn't strong enough, being electric, then they needed a new one. So they went to Village's Golf Carts, and they were referred to the battery boys, and they got a high-powered lithium battery. And he said the first night they had it, they went to Sumter Landing to enjoy the festivities, partied there till dark, and started home. And they didn't have any headlights. When they had hooked up this new battery, they had forgotten to replug something in, so they're dark. Oh, my goodness. They said they tried to go slow. You know, you can be traveling a half hour in your golf cart, no problem. Yeah. And people were honking at them and yelling at them and oh. giving them sign language and, <laughs> and all that. And so they, got fr they were afraid on the multimodal trail. They said it's super dark. So he held his iPhone out on flashlight one side, and she held hers out the other side, so everybody coming the opposite direction would see them. And that was funny. And he kind of closes it out. He says, you're the village's newcomers. We are the village's idiots. <laughs> L-O-L. No. Tony Ann has a question. Now, you saw her picture on last week's Mailbag Monday. We see there are hotels in the villages. Any information about hotel stays? Do people <laughs> do their lifestyle visits in hotels? Well, they do not do lifestyle visits in the hotels. When you do a lifestyle visit here, you're going to be given or uh, purchase for the night or the week um, a lovely little villa. And um, it will sometimes have three bedrooms, two baths. So it's very spacious and very nice. And you'll have to get your own food and bring it in. But it's a great thing to do, do the lifestyle here. Uh, there are, I counted like seven major hotels here in the villages. A couple of the top three are the Brownwood Hotel, the Waterford Inn, and the Hamptons Inn and Suites. Oh, there's lots more. But anyway, you can do hotel visits here. But We've no never been to them. one. We don't, we don't no. know about them, but the most popular would be the Brownwood Hotel and Spa. They have all kinds of services there, like massages. and. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, but that other one, the lakefront? The waterfront. Mm -hmm. Waterfront. That's up at Sumter Landing. Right. And, boy, what a view. That's, that's a lot. And the action. Cool. The restaurants, the oh, music is right there. Right Beautiful there, right there, there in town. Here's a subject that's near and dear to our hearts. We left Indiana and came here, and we have told you that we left a pretty nice place there. Patty and Bob in Kansas aren't sure if they can make that same move because they like where they live. Mm -hmm. You've told us you live in a big house and even had a farm back in Indiana. Can you share a few photos of your place there? It seems like you had to make a big adjustment. Well, we didn't just only have one place. We had a place where we lived, and our farm was a separate place. It was a half-hour drive away from our home. So it did not have a house. It had a little cabin. Here are some pictures of the farm. It was 85 acres, and it was situated in such a way that it was very majestic. You could be on that hillside, and as far as the eye could see, probably five miles, you could not see any other homes or anything. It was beautiful. And, I mean, the white-tailed deer and all that. We loved it. 
But 85 acres with over a mile and a half of fence line, yes. with roads to maintain, with <laughs> trees constantly falling down, yeah. grass to mow, it became a super big chore. And that's why we decided to sell the farm. Mm -hmm. And I miss it. I miss it a lot. I miss walking in real woods. There aren't any real woods down here. Uh, there are live oak trees. But that was beautiful. Am I sorry? Not one bit. Am I sorry we sold it? It was impractical. I would love to have had it and kept it and passed it down forever. Mm -hmm. But now we have a son that lives in South Carolina. We have one that lives in Tennessee and one that lives in Florida. They weren't going to be in Indiana. Mm -mm. So somebody would have had to take care of that. Yeah. Also, this is the house we lived in. The last one. We... We lived in several over our 44 years together. So we liked our home. It was about 3,000 square feet on a one acre lot. We had a huge koi pond. We had beautiful uh, landscaping. And we uh, had small woods in the back too. But it's on hills. It's a really hilly area. Ice and snow. Uh, seven months a year, there were no leaves on the trees. We like the ambiance here much better. The sky is beautiful every day. The grass is green every day. You know, we like it. So that's some, a few shots from back home. And here's one of Linda. She had the luxury of going to a kindergarten, which back then was just a preschool. Yeah. For how many years? <clears throat> Over 60 years, 65 years. You went to preschool for 65 oh, no. years? <laughs> I went there three years when I was three, four, and five. It was actually called kindergarten because it, uh, back in the day, they didn't have kindergarten in the public schools. So it was a kindergarten first. And then later when the kindergartens went to the public school, they just call it real, real kindergarten, but it was really preschool kids. So anyway, yeah. three years I went. <laughs> well, there's a picture of Linda and her <laughs> twin sister in the front row there at the kindergarten. And you can see the kids back then. That's pretty cute. Yeah. It's time for viewer of the week. While reading Next Door, which I like to read because you can get the scoop on a lot of stuff there, Bob Stepnoski from the village of Finney lost a money clip. Oh my goodness. Oh, I would be And he so advertised, help, I've lost a money clip, but I don't have any ID on it. It was just a clip with money over $600. Oh dear. So he placed it on Next Door. And lucky for him, Bruce and Carol Miller found his money clip, but they didn't know where to take it. So they started investigating and they found next door, found his post, and they were able to reunite and give him back his money clip with $608 in it. How wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce and Carol, you are the viewers of the week, mm -hmm. way above and beyond. What a great gesture to find that. I mean, for a minute there, you're thinking, whoa, we hit the lottery. Yes. Because you could find $20 or $30 and you think like, yeah, no, you found $608. Well, what honest people to return that and find a, a way to get it back to that person. That was wonderful. Yeah, great. Yeah. And hopefully you got a Starbucks or a, 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 <laughs> a beer big, out of a it. A big thank you, yeah. for sure. And this is our last question from Mike and Lynn in Cincinnati. After you bought your village's home, did you start freaking out about the effort needed to purge your home in Indiana? We just bought a house in Deluna and we are freaking out about the accumulation of stuff in our house in Ohio. Supposed to close and move soon and we are not ready. Well, <laughs> it's hard to purge. It is hard to get rid of it, but we did it and the longest journey starts with a single step. That's what I told another viewer that wrote me a question this week. Yes. Get going, jump in, get rid of something you really love, and then the rest of it will be easy. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so we did that. And you know, you've heard our stories. I don't even want to talk about it. But we did the same thing. Yeah. And it's, it is difficult. We don't regret it one bit. They're just things. What's important is the life you get when you get where you're going. And we like the life we have. Yeah. Don't pay so much attention to those possessions Get yes. down here and have a good time. Mm -hmm. You should see our closet. I threw away some clothes that broke my heart. Yes. But I kept my cowboy boots. We still have still a cowboy that. boots and cowboy hats <laughs> from the farm. <laughs> so don't worry so much about that. Just jump in, start getting rid of things. Yeah. You will be dizzy it's, for weeks, but then it, it'll yeah. be over. Yeah. And your life, 
I always like to tell people, when I'm in the middle of my little Aspen home here, it's about 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. If I'm standing right there, right there, in 25 steps, I can get to anything I own. Mm -hmm. Every tool, every possession, I love that. It's liberating. It is so liberating. Your shoulders just feel so much lighter because the stuff is gone. And your kids won't have to do it for you later on. So get rid of stuff, people. <laughs> he has been a really good boy. Some days he's not so good. He's oh, whining and pawing at us. and huh? But he's a very low-maintenance puppy. Mm -hmm. Did you have a show for us today? Do you have something for us? Take it away, Gizmo. <laughs> for the show today dad was having trouble with the printer and he said i can't get the paper to come out and i said don't worry dad because that printer is jamming it's jamming it's jamming oh baby it's jamming nancy wrote does gizmo get frightened by all the thunder lightning and rain or has he adjusted to it because she has a kitty named Marmalade that has a rough time with it. Marmalade, I sure hope that you're not scared to death by that thunder. You know, we get some big storms here. I don't know why, but for some reason they don't bother me. And I hope that you get used to them too. I agree. You are low maintenance, and he doesn't <laughs> seem to be bothered by that lightning no. or thunder. No. I, he'll drive in a car all day long, no problem whatsoever. So we are so lucky <laughs> to have him. Bag Monday. I told you this would be a long show. I'm sorry it's so long. When we put it together, we never really know how long that she's going to talk about stuff. I'm kidding. <laughs> but that's just, uh, we hope you liked it. And of course, as with any of our shows, you're free to drop out any time. Come back and finish it up later, hopefully. On Thursday, we're going to have a golf cart ride for you. Uh -huh. What do we do? We went to Chitty Chatty to see all the lovely colored homes. And thank you for hanging in there with us. You guys are amazing. I I'm always uh, surprised when you even take the time to send us a nice comment uh -huh. that you took time out of your day. So thank you all. We get so many. We try to answer as many as we can. If we don't answer your question, it's not because we didn't want to. Sometimes they get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. You know, there's so couple. many of them. But thank you all. Yeah. Uh, we absolutely love having this channel for you. And because we love you. <laughs> we do. <laughs> We're love we love people. <laughs> if you want to see more, how could you possibly want to see more after this long version? Go to Facebook and... Uh, Follow us, please. When you follow us, it helps us up as far as the, the algorithm goes, and it helps our channel. So follow us on Facebook, The Village's Newcomers, Jerry and Linda. And if you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>